Welcome to Farm Food Facts, the webcast and podcast of the U.S. Farmers and Ranchers in Action. To round out our summer listening, we're scheduled to hear from Dr. Cynthia Rosenswag, the winner of the prestigious 2022 World Food Prize, which honors leaders who are making huge strides in enhancing global food security and availability. Cynthia is a senior research scientist and head of the Climate Impacts Group at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies at Columbia University. She's a pioneer in the study of climate change and agriculture. Dr. Rosenswag, welcome to Farm Food Facts and congratulations on receiving the 2022 World Food Prize. Thank you, Phil. Thank you to USFRA for inviting me to be on the podcast. And yes, I'm thrilled and honored to, about the World Food Prize this year. So is it is it like the Nobel Prize where you, where you get something to wear or is it a trophy or what do you get? Um, I understand. I haven't gotten it yet. That's happening in October. Right. But I think it is a, um, a like a bronze statue of the sculpture, sculpture of the world with crops uh, indicated. Uh, on oh, the globe. Very cool. Very cool. You're going to have to send us a picture of it so we can post it with, with this webcam. Will do. Okay. So let, let's go back. You know, what got you started to be interested in agriculture, in food, environmental sciences? Obviously, to win a prize like this, you know, this is your life. Um, what, what got you started as a kid thinking about this? I grew up in the suburbs, Phil, but when I went to college and I met my husband-to-be, he had studied in Italy in the province of Tuscany, which is uh, where Chianti wine comes from, where they grow olives there um, and just have this beautiful relationship with the land. So we went over there together as young 20-year-olds, and I fell in love with agriculture in Tuscany, Italy. Just to fast forward, when we left and came back to the United States, I had a farm in upstate New York. Um, We grew vegetables and sweet corn and uh, pickling cucumbers, many things, and had lots of animals there too. Um, But then I decided I wanted to study agriculture. And so then I went to the land grant universities, first of New Jersey at Rutgers, and then for my PhD at the University of Massachusetts. So I've got to share with you my favorite place um, in probably all the world is Via Reggio in Tuscany. Yes, um, on the coast. I, yes, 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 yes. Um, I, I can I can understand. I mean, I didn't leave there with the passion that you have that I want to get into agriculture. But if I could live anywhere, it would be Via Reggio. So let, let's fast forward to today. Tell me what it's like to work for NASA and heading up their climate impacts group. I mean, this is major stuff here. NASA is a great agency, as I'm sure uh, all the listeners um, already know. Um, It's just a fantastic place to be a scientist. Um, And I'll tell you why specifically. One is that NASA, we all know, um, studies planets, right? So it takes, not only goes to space, but also considers the Earth as a planet. And so that global scale of agriculture and food, uh, food security, um, food production is, is enabled by the NASA missions and models of remote sensing and the global, the, the, and, and the global models that we use that are that developed uh, one of them is developed right in our in my own home institute Goddard Institute for Space Studies so the first thing is that it's this wonderful global scale that we can study agriculture on but at the same time we all know that agriculture happens right on the ground and with the remote sensing in particular and the crop models and livestock models that we use we can go right down to any agricultural region in the world and so we work with uh with researchers who do that all over the world and that's why it's so great to to work and to lead the climate impacts group at nasa 
So have you ever written that email that says, hey, I could do a much better job on, on climate if you sent me up there, you know, a couple miles or sent me to the moon <laughs> so I could look down? I am a feet on the ground person, but okay. I do know some of the, I have known some of the astronauts, so it's really exciting and always to interact with them. Um, and who knows, maybe, who knows, um, uh, maybe, maybe the, uh, the space shuttle at some point. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, the, no so sorry, cool. sorry, sorry. Maybe the International Space Station that I could, I could go up at some point. That would be great. So, and if you need somebody to carry your bags, you know, just just come. all right, all right. Um, I'll keep it so, in mind. So, what do you see as the number one issue that we're all faced with in climate change and sustainability in agriculture today? What's keeping you up at night? The silos. The silos are keeping me up at night because, and I'll tell you what I mean. Basically, there are two groups of people who have who have studied climate change and agriculture, and they reflect the two way street about climate change and agriculture. So the first part of it is the first one way on the street on the one way street is that agriculture is responsible for about a third of all human caused greenhouse gas emissions. So we have, and in order to solve that, we call that mitigation, reduction of the greenhouse gases from agriculture and food, by the way, it's the whole food system, not just production. The other one way street is that climate change is affecting production of food and with extreme events and the changes in the growing seasons uh, and increased pest infestations. Uh, and also change, uh, with extreme events uh, disrupting the, um, the supply chains. So what we need to do is have those two silos come together because it's really all one system in the food system. And we need to be thinking about reducing greenhouse gas emissions from the food system as well as preparing and developing resilience for the changes that are already occurring and that are projected to, to get worse. So, you know, this is your forum to farmers and ranchers. What do you want farmers and ranchers to do to help bring those silos together? You know, as I said before, it all happens right down on the ground. It's, uh, it, that's the heart of agriculture and food. And the key actors are farmers and ranchers. So what we need to do is all work together on figuring out ways in each, on each farm really, on each farm and ranch to both, what can we do in our operations and it's different for different farming systems. So there's no silver bullet that this is gonna solve the whole thing. But what we need to do is work together to figure out what are, the, what are the best appropriate and realistic ways that we can reduce emissions from our systems as well as prepare for, for increasing climate extremes, extreme events, more droughts. We're, this is what we're seeing, more droughts, more heavy downpours, um, more heat waves um, affecting, for example, maize during pollination. So what we really need to do is work together to develop, we call them, um, we, we call them in, in our AgMIP, which is our network of ag researchers who work on climate change all around the world. We call those adaptation packages and also mitigation packages. So what we need to do is work together to develop with farmers and ranchers. And because we can't just be doing it in our computers, that does not work. It's working together to, to really then address the challenges of climate change together. In just a few weeks, you will be officially um, the 2022 recipient of the World Food Prize. How could that platform 
being being that one person at top of the world food prize help you expand the work that you're working on with NASA, the work that farmers are doing? How can you now take this platform and bring it to the next level? As I said before, I'm so thrilled and honored to receive the World Food Prize this year. And one of the amazing opportunities is to speak with so many groups like USFRA. So I've, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying yes to every invitation to interact with as many groups as possible. And it's very encouraging, Phil, because so many groups here in the States and around the world are addressing these challenges of climate change. So this wonderful opportunity um, to interact with, with the groups is, uh, is just um, really just such, such a, 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 a wonderful time in my life, especially this year of, uh, of the year that I received it. The food systems are now emerging at the forefront of climate change. Climate change cannot be restrained without attention to food system emissions. It's a third of, of total human caused emissions. At the same time, food security for all, for every person around the world, can't be provided without resilience to increasing climate extremes. I want to salute the researchers around the world in the Agricultural Model Intercomparison and Improvement Project, we call it AGNIP, for their tireless work helping countries to achieve food security, both now in and in the future under climate change conditions. As we move now into a crucial decade of action on climate change, food needs to be at the table. Well, doctor, thank you so much for all your hard work. Congratulations on the World Food Prize. Um, don't forget when you get up to the space station, you know, send me a text. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for it, I'm gonna wait for it. And uh, again, congratulations and thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you so much. For more about all food and agriculture, please visit us at farmersandranchers.org. Also be sure to visit us on Facebook and Instagram at Farmers and Ranchers, as well as on Twitter and LinkedIn at USFRA. Until next time.